Hi folks, how are we all doing? It's Colin here. Uh, another little video here today. It's kind of documenting the work that is going into my white 75 as I recommission it after having parked it up during the middle of the pandemic. This is also basically kind of like a, a documentation for when I go and sell the car. As to try and justify the, the aimed for price for the vehicle. Um, I feel that a combination of the rare colour and the exceptional amount of work that will be put into it, as well as work that the vehicle has already had, um, is going to justify its value. I'm not going to say what the value I, I've personally placed on it, um, but when we get to the end of it all, and we get to the end of essentially this video, which will be filmed over possibly a couple of weeks, um, just with the way things are here, then I will sort of say where I think I am with this car. So, to begin with, we're going to reel off the list of parts here. Some of you may have seen on social media today that I was posting stuff left, right and centre, um, collecting parts and buying parts and so on and so forth. But I still have a huge amount still to arrive. <clears throat> But I did actually sit and have a wee look through it here, so I've kind of set it all out and I'm going to do bits here as we go along and the camera will just be like, oh, we've done this, we've fitted this, just wee snippet things sort of thing. Um, but I am going to do a video on how to service your Rover 75 diesel. I think it would be appropriate based using either this car or my new tour because it's all G as well. Um, everything basically how to do the full say annual service or biannual service whatever you want to do it and i think that's with considering how costs are in the world this day and age i want to show people just how really simple it is to service a diesel one of these never mind a petrol a petrol 1800 is even easier but a diesel one of these um nice and easy to service so yes, um, let's get into it. What have I got here now in front of me? I'm going to spin the camera around and then we'll see what parts we have gathered up already. Now forgive this, this is a bit of a sort of just, I just threw it all on the table kind of situation. So forgive the plastic bags. We have a pollen filter. We have a diesel fuel filter. We have an air intake filter. We have two rear springs, which it doesn't need, but I'm doing them anyway. I have two front springs, specifically four diesels, uh, along with two track rod ends and two drop links. Now, I do have two top mounts coming for these as well. They're currently in the post, so I'm waiting on them. And then on top of that as well, we have discs and pads and all that sort of caper as well. So, I mean, even what's sitting on the table, most people would know comfortably nearly 200 pounds worth of parts there already. The discs and pads as well, probably another 150-ish as well. So I'll be putting th at least £350 worth of parts, never mind my time and labour into it. So I just I feel it's interesting to document it before I go to sell it as well. And I'm curious to think then how other people value the work that I'll be putting into it. And if they feel it reflects accurately in the value of the car. To begin with, whenever we're going to do a diesel air filter, you're going to want to take your engine cover off. That's simply held in place by three screws or bolts, depending on what type you have set up in your car. The next job you want to do there as well is across the middle of the engine, you have the air intake system. Well, we're going to just remove that with two bolts that hold directly onto the air intake manifold. You're going to see me bring down two separates because strangely enough, I had two separate bolts. One was a screw and one was a bolt, however I'll be returning them back to normal standards afterwards. They're very, very loosely held in. Um, simply with this, as you'll see, all you're requiring to do is just to pull it slightly forward and push it off to the side. You don't need to do anything strange with it and personally it gives enough room. The next job we're wanting to do is we're going to actually take off the air box itself, which is the part that the oil cap sits on. Um, Hex tool is your friend here, six sided and a seven mil. Well, at least it is in my vehicle. Double check by comparison for yours in case there's been any changes. Um, very, very easy job to this part. And as you're taking them off, I always keep the oil cap on. I refuse to take the oil cap off to the very end. Now remember, these bolts do not actually physically come off from the housing. All they're doing is you're screwing them in a fashion that allows you to lift the housing with the bolts attached to it. 
you'll see that in a second but what i always do is you're going to see me lift off the oil cap and as i'm doing this you're going to also see me put my fingers over the two closest bolts to the oil cap because you don't want loose bolts going into your engine <laughs> that's a bit of a curse truthfully this is the hardest part about doing the air filter you see the cap come off fingers over it and lifts on and the cap on straight away to prevent any accidents and then lift the housing off to the side next job is just to physically remove the air filter very easy done pops out as you can see this one's gathered up quite a mess from the air dust and dirt and grime etc now the thing is you throw it away and get your new one ready but before you fit the new one the important thing i always tell people to do is to look inside the airbox housing it will often be filled with dirt and dust your best thing to do is to just get yourself a dry cloth clean it all out gives you nothing to worry about in the future and it knows that you're putting your nice clean air filter in speaking of there's only one way to put the air filter in and that's with the the nodule at the top you want the nodule at the top and then it slides straight in you put the nodule to the bottom it will not fit in correctly at this point then if you wanted to do an egr bypass or a pcv filter bypass as i just pointed to it would be a great opportunity to do it I personally check my PCV filter bypass every second air filter, but I do an air filter and an oil change in my vehicles every 8,000 miles, just because number one, I typically do that annually, and number two, there was reports in the early 2010s of PCV filter bypasses cracking on some BMW E46s. Small thing to check, personally, peace of mind. I know some people fit and forget and don't worry about it. As for fit and forget, you're now refitting the air housing here. As you can see, get it on roughly where it needs to be. I find that the oil cap side is usually the easiest side to go on, and it's the side that I'm struggling a wee bit here with. Um, then what I do is I always start with this far corner, get that nut bolt tighted in, and then you have no problems. Everything else just falls into place from this point onwards. Please remember and be aware when you're spinning your ratchets or your spanners, you are less than 78 inches away from your windscreen. And if you are not careful when you're doing this job and you're just spinning stuff, you're going to end up having to pay yourself for a new windscreen. It's worth bearing in mind as well not to set tools along the scuttle panel. I don't know how many times I've seen people say to me that they smashed their windscreen setting a ratchet spanner or anything along the scuttle panel just where the wee windscreen clips are along the bottom. So we'll get the five of them back on. They're not overly tight, but you want to make sure that there's a damn good seal. At the end of the day, this air filter is trying to keep water out of your engine, dust out of your engine, and it can do the best possible job by getting the five of them all done. And obviously, don't forget it, the one at the back. That seems to be one that a lot of people never bother doing for whatever reason, but it's done now, and as you can see, nice and handy. At this stage then, obviously, we're carrying on with the reverse slide on the air intake unit nice and handy simply just put your nuts or appropriate screws into the two holes there and that's you good as gold nothing else to worry about all at this stage all you're doing then is putting the engine cover back on unfortunately i stood in my engine cover and cracked it so i'm replacing it with a slightly alternative one however it did give me the chance to replace and renew all three bolts anyway and um, quite frustrating because it was an early pre-project drive engine cover but I'm sure I'll maybe find one before the vehicle goes up for sale regardless anyway. Three of them fitted, screwed in correctly, and you are done. Um, this one here, I personally find it can take a wee bit of movement of the engine cover. Uh, especially if it's ever been threaded in the past before, it's maybe worth just doing it right. And then you're done. Your air filter has changed. And you know what? You can stand back and say you've done a little bit of work to your car. It's something to be proud of. And you've probably saved yourself maybe half an hour's labor in a garage really it shouldn't take half an hour but hey they add, they add the bills up don't they and it really is as simple as that that is how to do an air filter on a rover 75 diesel it is not a hard job to do minimal minimal tools nothing special if you've ever watched the video before of when i do the pcv filter change that is exactly the same process and you can do them both at once as obviously discussed in the video now the next job i decided to do was the fuel filter fuel filter is a very very easy job on most 75s it's only an 8 mil bolt holding it in place lashed onto the side of the battery tray so what i'm going to do is we're going to go straight into the part now where we've already removed it and then i'll show you how easy it is during refitting 
truthfully, this is probably the easiest thing you can do to service a Rover 75 diesel, and you should never be paying anyone to do it yourself. And here we are under the bonnet of your car before we begin. Nice and simple. You have a rear pipe that clips out, a front pipe that clips out, and a little sensor. Watch the little clips when they clip out the pipes. Bar that, you have nothing else to worry about. The main fuel filter and housing will then only be held in place by that 8mm bolt. And if you look down from beside your battery tray, you will see that. A ratchet spanner is your friend here, especially if you have a nice 8mm one that's nice and short. Makes it for a lot of an easier job rather than messing around. Now, I don't know about anyone else. Whenever I'm doing the 75 diesel fuel filter, I like to use a vice. And you're just snib tight in that. Now, this should be tight uh, enough that you can turn it off with your hand. And as you can see, the fuel is pissing out. Now, some people will reuse that diesel. I personally, rule of thumb, when I'm putting a new filter in, I put fresh diesel in as well. So, screw this top off. We're going to dispose of the diesel appropriately in a wee another container that'll have me oil in. And we're going to fill that up with diesel and then we'll reattach it back to the car. Another thing to watch out for as well when it comes to these diesel fuel filters. Some manufacturers include a additional drainage plug and point at the bottom. This will actually cause it to sit up too high, even when you push it in as low as possible and you cannot remove it. It's part of the unit. Be cautious of that. I have seen that on units that are supplied for 330Ds as well as some Freelanders. However, make sure you get yourself an actual Rover 75 MGZ-T1. Like this Delphi is absolutely perfect with no problems. And there's the part number as well for you guys to see. So let's fill her up with clear diesel again. And this is another thing as well why I always like to do these filters because you can actually see the colour of the diesel it's in. Particularly problematic here in Northern Ireland where we have lots of washed diesel and bad sources of diesel. So now she's filled with diesel. It is literally just make sure you take this threaded housing and get it in correctly. And give the wee O-ring seal a wee coat of the diesel and spin it on. Now, it takes a wee spinner to it. There we go. Perfect. You do not need to go crazy with these things. As a matter of fact, I would highly recommend that all 75 and ZT diesel owners get a spare one of these. Because if you're doing a service on one of these and this cracks, you're up shit, shit creek, big style. So get yourself one of these. So, tick, 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 tick. Nice and taut. Problem solved. Let's get it back on the car. Now we have it back on the car, reassembled as you can see. And just so you can see yourself, there's actually a little arrow on the housing, which needs to be pointing towards the slam panel at the front of the car. You cannot go wrong refitting this. All you're doing is popping the clips back in, popping the two pipes back in and the sensor, and that is it. As you can see then, there's the 8mm little uh, bolt I was talking about. Really easy access. One of the easiest jobs you can do on a 75 diesel. And the next job on one of these is the cabin filter. Now, cabin filter on a diesel, if for any of you who have never done one before, it's a little more awkward compared to the petrol because you have a lot more loom going in there as well. On top of that, the ECU actually sits a bit deeper. Personally, how I like to do it, I like to disconnect the battery and take the ECU off just to give you that little bit of extra movement. It takes seconds to do, it's a lot easier. So this is actually a really good example to show you the kind of dirt and things like that that can build up and why it's important to sort your plenums on a regular basis. This being an early car, it has three and we'll clean them as we're going along. Uh, as we're talking about here, these are the plastics that I'm talking about specifically. Now, you'll see people pull this off and bend that up and only undo a couple of those clips along there. Personally, I undo the clip to the middle wiper and I take this whole part off here like so, all the way across. And with regards to these, I take this off as well and I take it off gently. Parts like this are only going to get harder and harder to get fined and casual easy damage. As you can see, this one has no damage and I'd like to keep it that way. Um, so we'll take that off and get the underneath out and get this cabin filter swapped over and I'll show you what I mean about the wire and difficulties. First job you want to do is you pop off your windscreen scuttle clips. Um, as I said earlier, take off the four, nice and easy. A nice little flathead screwdriver will do the job. Do not use too much pressure. Your windscreen is on the other side of this. You do not want to crack it. 
After you've done that, then you want to take off the first of the covers, the external cover, which you're going to see me push off with two clips to the side and it just lifts straight off nice and easy. Next job then, there's a wee scrivet here. Sometimes they can be rounded off. If you're going to do this, I generally try and keep a few and renew them. If yours is stuck, get a star head and a flat head like you're going to see me doing. And as you're spinning it with the flat head, lift it up, job done, pop straight out. Your next stage then is to lift up the main plastic housing and take away the waterproofing cover. As you can see, it's quite dirty and dusty, so we'll give that a clean before it goes back on the car. After that then, we're just taking the battery cover off and we're going to disconnect our negative thermal. People say, do you need to take the ECU off? You can make the loom stretch. Personally, I wouldn't want to risk damaging the looms. So this is the way I do it to prevent any damage at all to the vehicle. Okay, for those that have maybe never seen inside of here before, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. We have here, as you can see, the cabin filter. This is exactly the same as the cabin filter here. You can see what way it mounts. The two snibs at the top, the way it goes in with the sponge, etc. All nice and handy. So that in itself is not hard. The problem is, as you can see, is that it's a little bit tricky to get access. Now, like I say, I've undone the battery. I'm going to take the cover off here, which you're going to see me do, and then I'm going to disconnect the ECU just to give me a little bit of room to push the wires out of the way to give me the best possible access to this. This is the only way I describe it to people as the best way of doing it. Pain in the hole, getting these four off. I like to try and do it, lift two at the front before you pull it up, two at the back, leaves the ECU open. Me and ECU, really, really easy to do. It's lots of little pull out clips, as you'll see. Push them down. Push them down. somewhere safe. Gives you great room. I'm going to show you now. Okay, so as you can see, we have all the wiring pulled to the side. Just gives that, so that little bit more freedom. And we can see clearly down into the firewall area. I have already removed the filter. And this is the middle plenum people here are talking about so much. And just excuse me. And as you can see, flowing perfectly well. So now it's a case of pop the new filter back in put all it back in and jobs are good but while we're at it I'm going to clean out any excess gunk and crap and things like that as well that's maybe just hidden around there just for my own personal security now when you're refitting this filter you can see there's different snibs the two at the bottom with the foam goes towards the firewall of the car and the three at the top stay at the top so nice and easy to see you can't really go wrong with it. Getting it in is a bit of a trick because there's one single screw on the bulkhead right at the back. Always seems to catch it and it's about here, straight down. 
Um, so sometimes you'll see guys breaking it there. Sometimes it does break naturally there anyway. Um, as long as it's clipped in, you will be okay. This is where you'll always see if it's been done wrong. Clip there at the top. Clip here. This camera will focus going over the top. Next clip there. Same as this one down here. If we can just get it to focus. Goes into place. And the two bottom. Whole unit should be flush. Common mistake is down here. It won't sit flush. You got to tap it in. Get it nice and perfect and then that's you now i know some people would quite happily turn around and say yes i'm willing to move the whole ecu and the housing and it all just lifts up etc etc out of the way i understand that i used to do it that way but then i started noticing how easy the panel that goes across the main windscreen can crack and snap for me this is all about maintenance of the vehicle without having to spend any money on top of that as well, if you actually look at the way the top loom connects into the ECU whenever you're bending it, you're putting it under quite a bit of pressure because that top loom connects to the top part of the ECU housing cover and goes a whole length of it. Personally, I'm not happy doing it that way. This is how I like to do it. If you want to do it your own way, that's fine. This is what I would advise as the hassle-free way of doing it to make sure you're not going to damage wires, damage housing, etc, etc. And as long as you have that negative terminal off, you're flying. Refitting is exactly as you guys can see. It's a very simple little job. It's just reversing exactly what I've done. Truth be told, maybe if it took you 10 minutes to do the complete refit, as long as you have the bottom ECU housing clicked into place, you will be having no problems at all. And the ECU only fits one way anyway. That's all the wires back into place. Final thing we need to do is put the ECU housing cover back on. Now, you'll notice that one of the wires, the main looms, has this nice square rubber gasket over it and grommet for fitting it. Slide straight on the top and that's how you know you've put everything on right. So, finally we're going to reattach the top half of the housing. Now, as I said earlier on, you're going to see one of the bits of rubber grommets comes through it and you just clip that rubber grommet into place and then slide the waterproof housing on top. Two clips to the rear, two clips to the front. I always tell the front closest to the uh, headlights and the rear closest to the air filter. Very easy done. Make sure it's done right because you want to avoid any and all possibilities of getting any kind of moisture in and around the ECU. That's well documented in the forums and it shows you just how vulnerable a position it can be in. Good. How it is. That's all in. And you obviously want to make sure that is triple check all four of them are on right. Obviously you can't reach the front two. That's why it's important to do the back two first and then the front two. Reassemble now. And we're in the final stretch now, folks. Now, what I always like to do is I always like to check that it's the right scrivet. These mistakes do happen. So I set it there before I go and get the waterproofing panel there. The waterproofing panel sits very nicely and snugly along the firewall there. You just see it clips in perfectly and you just get a nice feel for it. Um, put it in, make sure it's sitting sealed right because you're trying to prevent water egress into the area. Push your scrivet back in, straight in, tighten it up or top it in like I just did there no problem next job then is to make sure everything is put back into place so you're just popping those little windscreen scuttle panel clips back in easy as pie thing to do finally you're going to go and grab the last of your covers here the covers go in make sure you take your time doing it do not force it do not bend it or you'll crack it and they look terrible cracked finally the windscreen rubber seal then goes back on but before we do anything else, I'm grabbing the keys out of the vehicle before I reattach the battery. It's something that has happened to me once before and it'll never happen to me again. I always have them handy there. Negative on, grab your 13mm, tighten it up. Me, I like to make sure they are really, really tight. 
hit the alarm button, put the battery triad back on, and we are done. Congratulations. Ta-da! It is not that hard, folks. It is really not. This is the kind of basic maintenance that any 75 owner could do. Cabin filter, you get away with doing it once every two years, quite easily, depending on your mileage. And to be completely honest, bar going in there and checking for a plenum, you don't need to worry about it. But that's it. It's now 10 o'clock. I'm going to switch the car off. I'm happy that everything's running. Um, obviously, if you had it done an oil change, you would have been letting the oil go through all the way as well. So that's the cabin filter, that's the air filter, and that's the fuel filter. I call that a win. So that's the basic service we've done under the bonnet of this car. And now we're going to get into the rest of the stuff tomorrow. And hopefully the weather's a bit better. And start into we're going to do the rear ends, we're going to do the rear springs, tidy up the rear arms, and do rear breasts, breasts, Ooh. rear brakes, discs, and pads, and adjusting the handbrake. So that's it for now. Let's get into the next part of this. Just like this, um, the video's turned into a lot longer than I realised, so I'm going to have to split it up. Um, the recommissioning and it's nice because in a weird sort of way the video has actually become a kind of like a, a DIY guide for anyone who wants to do a little bit of basic servicing themselves um, when you're in doing the air filter as discussed you'd be mad not to either do a PCV filter for your crankcase breather or a PCV bypass um, for the crankcase filter your choice your preference personally I like the bypass I know when it's fitted it's fit and forget very very unlikely you're going to have a problem with it what i do do is every time i'm doing a second air filter i whip it off i check it look for any problems and cracking and put it back in and um, if you really really wanted to be doing it maybe every two years i would think that wouldn't be a bad idea depending on how many miles etc you're doing but i will say this and you will see this in the pcv bypass filter don't forget you're going to need specialist tools to undo those wee two bolts don't make the mistake of using mole grips or vice grips or something like that it ain't gonna end well um i've heard a few star horror stories about people not listening to that piece of advice link for them is in the description they are cheapest chips on amazon no excuses speaking of no excuses considering the average mechanic is now charging 40 50 pound an hour you guys see how easy it is to do this uh, air filter I would say 5 out of 10. You know, if, if you can do that, you'll have 5 out of 10 confidence. Fuel filter, you can do that, you'll have 8 out of 10 confidence. You can do the carbon filter on a diesel 75, you should give yourself 10 out of 10 confidence. They're not hard to do, just take your time, be methodical, listen to what I've said, and you will not go wrong. I promise it is that simple and you will have a lot more money in your pocket and also know that as you have done the car work yourself you can see the parts that were going in and everything fits right not hard to do not hard to go wrong but that's it um guys as always thank you very much um the channel is growing and growing and growing we recently had our 1500 subscriber giveaway I'm going to do a little short video showing their car very, very shortly, um, where the brake discs went off to. It's actually a really cool car. And knowing that the giveaway has made the difference of what the work they were putting into it, and them winning the car has allowed the car to be completely restored. So them winning those brakes just made the difference and saved them a lot of money to get the car back on the road. So big thumbs up all around. As always, if you just want to sponsor the channel, we have membership options for the channel with behind the scene videos, um, discounts, etc. Check the link in the description from 99p a month. That's pretty damn cheap. Um, on top of that, the eBay store, you know where to find the eBay store. And if you just want to contact me on social media, links are in the description. Just click, click, click and get in contact. I love hearing from people. I love hearing little messages from you and tell me your projects and all as well. Because it keeps me motivated whenever I'm maybe having a bad day that some nuts broke off. I'm going to have to get the tap and die drill or whatever. Somebody sends me a picture of them having the exact same problem. It cheers me up. It really does. Folks, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a comment. Give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. My God. 
there is nearly 80 plus percent of people who watch my videos are not subscribers so please if you can find the time to hit the subscribe button it really really helps my channel grow thank you as always and we'll get back to the next part of this and um, the next job we will be doing we'll be tackling the rear end as discussed earlier oh uh oh, i do like a nice tight rear end um, <laughs> And then once the top mounts come, I'm going to tackle the whole front all at once, and then it's done. It's a case of then wait for myself to arrive and book the MOT. I'm going to regret selling this car. There's far too much work done on it. Um, but hey, sometimes these decisions have got to be made so that other things can be done. So get this one finished, hopefully this week, and it's waiting for the sill to be welded in, and then that can be ready to go and then the stripping begins to get this engine out of this tour parts have started arriving for it as well parts 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 never stops look folks thanks as always and i'll catch you all in the next video